What's up, fellas? I got a treat for y'all today. The long-awaited program Dragon Fist is out. You can find it in the description right now on Boost Camp. Make sure when you sign up, use my code Omni so you can get a free trial of the Pro subscription. It comes with a lot of extra functionality that the base version does it. Most of my programs are free. This one is only available on the Pro subscription, but like I said, you get a week free. I'm also going to be doing a part two to this video, so this is going to be a, a breakdown just to see if it's a good fit for you. But the next video in the series is going to be demoing full two training sessions from Dragon Fist to include the extensive coaching notes that we'll get into in a second. The biggest problems in fitness are accessibility and then not having the time commitment that your favorite influencer has to work it out. Dragon Fist is a really cool solution to both of those problems. And on top of that, it also does something else that's really important. It gives you guidance and accountability. Full disclosure, if you're just looking to run a program that is well written by me, you can just run Raider or Beast Slayer or my Push Pull Legs program or one of my other programs on Boost Camp. But the biggest thing sometimes isn't having the tools, it's knowing how to use them. And as I said, having the accountability there to ensure that you're using them the right way. Because left to our own devices, fellas, look, don't judge yourself if you go off the books, but listen, I used to freaking grease the groove bench press, all right? So left to my own devices, I'll do something boneheaded like that. But if the accountability is here, it keeps you in check. The way that that comes into play with me not being there is I leave extensive coaching notes. I haven't had this on any of my other programs. I have FAQs to kind of give you a high level breakdown, but I've never had something that's categorically going through every exercise not only how to select them where you have the choice, but how I envision you performing them, how I want you to progress them, how I want the cadence to be. And I have never done that before. And that's the reason why it's on Boost Camp Pro because I wanted to give you all a premium experience and give it to you in a way that is not full price like coaching is. Coaching in and of itself is a, is a luxury item for people. That's a bill basically, bro. And I don't feel that a lot of times that's necessary for people. Sometimes that simple amount of accountability is enough to keep people on the ball and to make a great program, give great, excellent results. I'm a big believer in self-coaching, don't get me wrong. And there'll be a ton of that in the Berserk Method 2024, but most fellas do benefit from some level of that accountability and Dragon Fist has a lot of it. In this video, I'm gonna be talking from here on out program philosophy, design philosophy basically things I want you to think about while you're running the program and everything that you need to know. So at a high level, I wanted to take my most popular programs, which is Raider and Beast Slayer, and, and make them so hands-on that you have no excuse, so easy to run, that you have no excuse, no choice, but to get fucking jacked. You have no choice if you run this program. Like I just talked about accessibility, it shows you exactly how I want you to do each and every exercise. If you're wondering in your head, am I doing this right? Is this slow enough? Is this fast enough? Does he want me doing it this way? Literally, bro, you can just look at the notes. Exactly what I wrote out is more or less how I want you to do it. And that way, if you're not doing that, you also have that accountability there. Like, regardless if I choose to do this the way he told me to or not, I can still clearly see that he told me to do it this way. Does that make sense? Also, when it comes to selecting exercises, it's showing you exactly how to pick them, when to switch them. So you never have to ask, should I be doing this? How do I do that? And am I doing this good enough? And when it comes to volume, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, time commitment. These workouts need to be fast. The truth is, is that most of us don't need to be in the gym for very long to get exceptional results. Now, if you want tip of the spear, tippity top fitness influencer results, more than likely you're gonna to need to train a little bit more than this video, but for 99.9% .9 of people, even those that have very serious strength and size goals, you can get an hour workout and be good. You can hit everything, you can hit it hard, and you'll be good to go. A number one piece of feedback though, in terms of the volume was pulling volume. People just wanted more. So, you know, despite my personal opinions, I'm not gonna argue with the people if multiple people were asking for more, I could sit here and say that I'm giving you 20. If you're asking for more, I can give you more. But there had to be some concession there. So I can't just add infinity volume and then not take it out. So a lot of my thought process with making this program was finding a way to add more of that without it being junk volume and without having to take away from other important things. So I just 
trimmed on the miscellaneous stuff that you can find in a lot of my other programs to make room for back work. We have two arm days instead of three, so it ended up working out. The volume overall is pretty par for course for what you would expect. So two to four sets, as little as two, as many as four. The thing with this program though is, is that 99% of y'all, I'm gonna recommend that you pick less volume. So pick the lowest or at least the lower amount of volume. One, so that you have something to progress up to, so you can add more sets later. But two, with a lot of these exercises in the coaching notes, you're doing things to fuck with the intensity on the set to where you're not going to want to do four sets of some of these exercises, bro. You're going to you're only going to need to do two. Doing a set where you're specifically slowing down as you reach failure or you're doing things to as I said add intensity to the set, that is orders of magnitude different. Doing two sets that way than doing two sets with a normal form cadence to failure. The two cannot be compared to one another. And I lean into that type of intensity technique, not to just give you an arbitrarily hard workout because that's dumb. Johnny one play personal trainer doing freaking squats on the BOSU ball can make their elderly client do that, right? Any fucking jarhead can make someone do a tough workout. This is turning that intensity dial a little bit and manipulating the volume so that you can get in more work in less time. One last thing I'm gonna leave you with, with the volume, just so that I can say that I said it and there's no confusion. I can use the lower amounts of volume on a lot of this stuff. So like the back workout and the, the push and pull workout that I'm gonna demo to you guys in the next video. I picked the lower amounts of volumes, like number of sets on a lot of the exercises, and I can progress just fine on that. If, if it works for me, it's gonna work for 99.99% of y'all. Even if like, you're a similar level of development, it's it's still gonna work for you. Talking a little bit about the split itself, it's a push-pull legs, upper-lower hybrid. So it's upper-lower rest, push-pull legs, rest. It's five days a week. I wanted to combine the benefits of not only just two splits that are really, really popular with people for the most part, upper-lower and push-pull legs are the most popular. I personally really, really like upper-lower, but I also know that people like push-pull legs and it comes with some benefits. And that wasn't just me trying to like appeal to what people like. There's logical benefits that come with combining splits and making a hybrid split. So just like with B Slayer, I combine upper lower with full body. You get the benefits of both types of splits at minimal additional time cost. So like with full body, for instance, you can get in a full full body experience with three workouts per week. But if you make it a hybrid program and combine it with upper lower so that you're working out four times a week, you get all of the benefits of full body just at the expense of an additional day in the gym. So with an upper lower push pull legs hybrid, you get all the benefits of upper lower, but on a push pull legs type of split, you get the luxury, because it is a luxury, you get the luxury of being able to isolate your pushing muscles, your pulling muscles, and then your leg muscles in a way that you can't really on upper lower. You can generally work everything really well on things where you're combining multiple muscle groups on one day, but the less muscle groups that you're working per day, the better that you can attack them. So this is why a lot of people really like bro splits, for instance, and why I'm not totally opposed. It combines the pros of upper lower with it as well, which in my mind, the pros of an upper lower are first and foremost, you get good frequency. You, as I said, get a great general stimulus to a bunch of muscles on one day, and then also recovery. Now you are in the gym five days a week, but these sessions are gonna be faster and you're still getting two full rest days not in the gym and it's spaced out in such a way what muscles you're hitting that each muscle group gets adequate amount of rest. And you're still hitting them all frequently throughout the week. It's two times frequency on every day. So at a high level, there's a lot of things that came into play with the design philosophy that I put in place to make sure that there's a great quality of life when running this program that it's repeatable and like I said, it keeps you accountable and it's just it's just a lot of fun. Things I want you to keep in mind when you're running this though, there's a couple off the top of my head. First and foremost, people are gonna ask, well, can I turn this into a, a program that's more applicable to powerlifting? Because this is just a general strength and hypertrophy program. You're gonna be doing benching and pull-ups and dips and deadlift variations and barbell squats. But if you wanted to make it something where you know, you're doing more benching more frequently throughout the week, instead of doing the incline bench, 
You can do a flat bench variation, so like a wide grip or whatever your main grip bench is. And then on the second day, you can just do something like whatever your opposite grip is. So for me, I like like a medium grip. I would do that. And then on the second day, I do like a close grip bench or a Larson press or something like that. For people that are questioning what angle of incline should I use on the incline bench, use whatever angle that you like on the incline bench that you feel targets your upper pecs the most. We all arch a little bit differently and how much you arch is gonna impact how much your upper pec gets used or not. I'm gonna give you guidance in terms of where to bring the bar, but how, you, how high you set the incline pretty much is up to you, bro. I really like the standard 45 degree incline and you can make that work by just arching minimally, but some people just do to either repetition with arching and they just naturally arch the same on everything or people who just arch because it, it helps their shoulders feel good on presses. Like I said, you can just adjust that angle up or down. In terms of exercises that I haven't listed that you might really like that I just didn't put in here. This is where I'm gonna say, just look at the slot and just say, does this exercise that I like fit in this slot well? For example, if there's a tricep isolation that you really like that I didn't list for some reason, like an incline push down. I know I didn't put that on the program. It's a really great exercise, but I just wasn't thinking about it. You could put that on the tricep isolation. It's just simple shit like that. Now talking about exercises, some people may have noticed that there's like a regular way to do this program. And then there's like the hard mode, the Goku mode. This is the Goku program. Listen, fellas, if it, it should be obvious if you need to run it on regular mode or Goku mode. Goku mode is going to have you doing handstand push-ups like he was doing in the freaking gravity room. It's going to have you doing harder variations of exercise that or is just stuff that he did on the show. It, it's giving you the option, the option of doing barbell rows after your RDLs, which is freaking brutal. I actually did that on the demo workout. I'm going to post uh, maybe the, the, the day after this video, whatever this posts. It was freaking brutal. I'm sitting there now and my back is still sore. Those are what separates like the more of the intermediate into the advanced people that are going to run it. Like I said, advanced people can handle that level of just beat down in their workouts and they're likely strong enough to do like deficit handstand pushups. But if you're new, please don't put a square peg in a circular hole because you're going to get frustrated and you're not going to like the program. I give you options instead of doing handstand push-ups, you can just do like a seated military press or a seated dumbbell military press. Instead of doing barbell rows after your stiff legs and RDLs, just do a chest supported row or, or pull down or something like that. Last little thing I wanna leave y'all with is just nutrition that I want you to kind of keep in mind when you're running this program. Listen, number one question I get when it comes to people asking me like, do I need to do this or that is, should I bulk or should I cut on this program? Do I need the bulk? Can I run this while I'm cutting? You can run any program regardless of your bulking, cutting, maintaining. I do envision you having a high quality diet where you're not depriving yourself. And this will come into play with more stuff that I'm gonna talk about in the Berserk Method. But I think honestly, the biggest problem with people like trying to make progress while they're cutting isn't that they're training in a calorie deficit and they can't make gains. Most people who, who who just jump into a cut and then suddenly can't make gains, it's not that they're cutting, they're depriving themselves because they have either body dysmorphia or some sort of unrealistic expectation about how much weight they should be losing or how they should be cutting. So it's not that they're cutting, they're depriving themselves of just basic shit like adequate amounts of protein, micronutrient intake, enough carbs around your workout. So. Get in tune with your diet first, whatever that looks like. So cut well, bulk well, maintain well on a well-balanced diet. And that's what I have in mind. I don't have in mind someone who is, is doing the starvation diet or, or just only eating anabolic French toast from Greg Doucette and like nothing else and is a grown man eating a thousand calories. Goku and every Saiyan on the show, this is a warrior race, they eat really well. One thing I want you to keep in mind with that diet wise is evaluate, do I even need to be bulking? Do I even need to be cutting? 
This is more so for the, the fellas that are already lean and just can't see how lean they are because they're under muscled. You need to put some muscle on your frame so that your body fat percentage looks different. Because the honest truth is, is that, we'll just use body fat percentages for instance, an under muscled 15% body fat is gonna look like shit to most people that are into lifting weights and, and have the unrealistic standards of the internet. You'll look like a normal dude walking down the street. You, not even normal, because the average dude walking down the street is obese, and is overweight, and actually needs to lose weight. You'll look like an in-shape dude, but that looks a lot different from 15% with a lot of muscle mass. You'll look ripped to the average person. You'll look ripped to people that lift weights. So. If it's, if it's a matter of that, try to be objective in terms of your body fat percentage. That was a little bit more of a tangent, but the diet aspect is just as important as the training aspect and certainly is something that Goku took into account with his training as well. But at the same time, don't have ab anxiety. And this is almost talking to a separate group of people. I'm talking to two different separate groups of people. That person had body dysmorphia in one direction. I'm gonna to speak to another classification of fellas and you let me know if this applies to you. You eat you eat a lot and then you gain weight and you almost don't see how much weight you're gaining. And then it ends up that you gain like 30 pounds in a couple months and you, you don't notice how fat you're getting until again, you go from 170 to 210 in like four months. In terms of the calorie surplus, what I always say for fellas that are bulking Think of it less as bulking, more of eat to support your training. And by that, I mean, if you can progress in your training, regardless of what the scale is saying, you are eating enough calories. Keep your protein high, keep your activity level high. That's gonna hedge things like water retention. It's gonna let you eat more, which will let you eat more vegetables, which is very important. All of those things need to come into play with eating to support your training. And I'll talk more about this on Berserk Method 2024, which will come out before the end of the month. We'll say between the 28th and the 30th. Um, but yeah, we'll cover more of that there. So again, eat to support your training and eat well. And that's all, fellas, that's all that I could think about. Of course, if you have any questions about the program, or what we talked about today, please leave a comment down below. I'm gonna compile most of the frequently asked questions into an FAQ because this program is, uh, or rather this video is gonna be listed in the, in the program as well, like a link to it just for people to refer to. But like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. You watch these videos now that you've watched this one. Have a good day.